36 days ago, President Biden told the American people that the Taliban would not take over Afghanistan after he ordered the removal of U.S. troops. Is the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops at 300,000, well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an Air Force, against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. Mr. President, thank you very much. Your own intelligence community has assessed that the Afghan government will likely collapse. That is not true. That is not true. They, so, did, not, they didn't, did not reach that conclusion. They clearly have the capacity to sustain the government in place. And do you see any parallels between this withdrawal and what happened in Vietnam with some people feeling... With None whatsoever. Zero. What you had is you had entire brigades breaking through the gates of our embassy. Six, if I'm not mistaken. The Taliban is not the, South, the North Vietnamese Army. They're not, they're not remotely comparable in terms of capability. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. It is not at all comparable. So the question now is, where do they go from here? That, the jury is still out. But the likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. Well, I hate to burst his bubble here. But now the Taliban have not only seized approximately 100 U.S. Humvees and Max Pro in wraps, but also several U.S. Scan Eagle drones, thanks to the administration's hasty withdrawal without a peace deal or follow-up mission. Taliban in control in Afghanistan after seizing presidential palace. President Biden and other top U.S. officials have been stunned by the pace of the Taliban's nearly complete takeover, as the planned withdrawal of American forces urgently became a mission to ensure a safe evacuation. And as of yesterday, the Afghan president has fled the country. Biden lied. He knew Kabul would fall, and yet he publicly stated that it wouldn't happen. This situation was 100% predictable, but Biden didn't care. Never forget what former President Obama said. Don't underestimate Joe's ability to fuck things up. And where has Joe Biden been exactly? Well, he went to his Delaware home on Friday, August 6th. He was scheduled to come back on Sunday, August 8th, but extended his time in Delaware until August 10th. He left today for Camp David and is not scheduled to return until next Wednesday. No information has been released on meetings, if any. It seems to be a game of follow the leader at this point. Jen Psaki will also be out of the office from August 15th until August 22nd. 72 hours at Camp David, inside Biden's lagging response to the fall of Afghanistan. President Biden is expected to address the nation in the next few days about the crisis in Afghanistan. Thank you. May God protect our troops, our diplomats, and all brave Americans serving in harm's way. <laughs> Reading a script for 10 minutes, blaming Trump and the people of Afghanistan, and every political leader in America except for himself. Nice. Does anyone remember this tweet? It's hard to believe this has to be said. But unlike this president, I'll do my job and take responsibility. I won't blame others. One of the cruelest foreign policy speeches I've ever heard from an American president, but maybe the cruelty is the point. Blaming the Afghans seems cruel. They did fight for their country. Many, many thousands died. And they fought for us after 9-11. Nothing says the buck stops here about the botched withdrawal like Biden giving a straw man argument about why he supported Trump's decision to leave, turning on his heel and rushing out without taking a single question, and returning to his vacay. Joe Biden just read the teleprompter for 20 minutes, refused to take any questions, and didn't offer any explanation for how his administration has created the worst foreign policy disaster in two generations, refused to address the crisis, and took zero questions. Holy crap, he took no questions, and he never addressed the botching of the withdrawal. Not only is Joe Biden lost, but our Pentagon is lost as well. On August 13th, they said Kabul is not an imminent threat. On August 15th, the Taliban has taken over Kabul. Then the State Department called on the Taliban to form an inclusive and representative government. This is not satire. The UN Security Council issued a joint press statement earlier today calling for a new government that is united, inclusive, and representative including with the full and, full and meaningful participation of women. Nancy Pelosi had this to say about the Taliban. They must know that the world is watching its actions. We are deeply concerned about reports regarding the Taliban's brutal treatment of all Afghans, especially women and girls. 
I like GF's response. Maybe if we start a hashtag campaign with famous people holding signs and looking sad, things will get better. Hashtag Coney 2012, anyone? The Navy SEAL that killed bin Laden called for General Milley to resign over the Afghanistan failure. Obama has suspended his Instagram comments after his followers flooded his page with pleas to help the Afghan people amid the Taliban takeover. This Afghan veteran said, Didn't run from it. He owned it. He owned his decision. I hope he gets to own their deaths, too. I, I don't, I feel like I watched a different speech than the rest of you guys. I was appalled. There was such a profound, bold faced lie in that speech. The idea that we planned for every contingency. I have been personally trying to tell this administration since it took office. I've been trying to tell our government for years that this was coming. We sent them plan after plan on how to evacuate these people. Nobody listened to us. We had all the people and equipment in place to be able to save these people months ago. The Taliban's leaders took more questions from our media than President Biden. One of the spokesmen received a question about freedom of speech, and he said the question should be asked to U.S. companies like Facebook. This question should be asked to those people who are uh, claiming to be promoters of freedom of speech, uh, who do not allow uh, publication of all information. And you sh I can ask Facebook. Uh, this question should be asked to them. The U.S. Embassy in Kabul issues security alert. Reports of the airport taking fire shelter in place. Do not come to the embassy or airport at this time. The Biden administration officials told Senate staffers that there is no plan to evacuate Americans who are still outside of Kabul, as they do not have a way of getting through the Taliban checkpoints outside the capital city. Never forget that the federal government spent 700 million tax dollars to build the U.S. embassy in Kabul. Here are some scenes from the Kabul airport. It was confirmed that at least a couple of people died from falling off the airplane once it took off. And there's also a video going around that I'm not going to show you of someone caught in an engine as the airplane's in the air. If you ever find yourself in a position thinking how awful the United States is, just remember, there are people willing to attempt to ride on the exterior of a jet to get away from what's going on in their country. Kinda wild seeing people cling to an aircraft and fall to their deaths for a chance to come to America. Here's a look inside one of the C-17s carrying more than five times its passenger limit. 640 Afghans safe from the Taliban. Reports are estimating between 10 and 40,000 American citizens are stranded in Afghanistan. The below note went out this afternoon to American citizens requesting to be evacuated from Afghanistan. It instructs people to come to the airport in Kabul, but says the U.S. government cannot guarantee their safety as they make the trip. Afghans are being dragged out of their homes and executed by the Taliban. A CNN reporter on the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan. They're just chanting death to America, but they seem friendly at the same time. And then multiple reports out of Afghanistan stated that CNN journalist Bernie Gores has been captured and executed by the Taliban. They're even breaking prisoners out of jail. A photo of a school in Afghanistan closed due to security reasons. The students showed up bright and early anyway. Teachers said goodbye to their female students who won't be allowed to go to school anymore. A numbing, helpless feeling. There are credible reports that the U.S. is offering vast sums of cash to the Taliban in order to allow evacuations to proceed. Bruno says, hope the U.S. media is on top of this story. They are now. Just take a look at what Jake Tapper had to say yesterday. Secretary Blinken, as you know, the Taliban has closed in on Kabul. We're evacuating the embassy, burning documents. Biden increased troops deploying to the country twice in three days just to rescue those there. How did President Biden get this so wrong? You cited the, the May 1st deadline uh, negotiated uh, by the Trump administration. You did blow back, blow through that deadline. But I think, again, the issue here is not just the withdrawal of U.S. forces. It's how they were withdrawn. Hastiness. Um, President Obama's former ambassador to Afghanistan, Ryan Crocker, he called the way this was done, quote, a handover to the Taliban, and quote, we have hung them out to dry about the Afghan people. people. Crocker continued, quote, I'm left with some grave questions in my mind about Biden's ability to lead our nation as commander in chief. To have read this so wrong, or even worse, to have understood what was likely to happen and not care, unquote. Well, the idea of uh, them, the force not being able to defend, I mean, what a lot of experts believe, uh, and you can disagree with this if you mm -hmm. want, is that uh, having U.S. air support, having U.S. intelligence there to help the Afghan troops on the ground is what stiffens their spine, enables them uh, to do what they do. And that's part of the larger issue about whether or not the U.S. should have left behind any sort of residual force. But 
But beyond that is, again, the question of how poorly this was done. The idea that President Biden ordered 2,500 service members out and now is sending up to 5,000 service members back in, does that not on its face show that the, ex that the exit was ineptly planned? And again, look, you told me a few months ago on this program that you thought it was entirely likely that the Taliban would be taking over the country. But President Biden, just last month, quote, the likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. He was wrong. Why didn't you have the troops in there and then let that happen first before taking them out? You keep changing the, the subject to whether or not we should be there forever. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about whether or not this exit was done properly. And then you have to send people back in. That shows that's a definition of, oh, we shouldn't have taken those troops out because now we have to send twice as many back in. Why now? Why are you just doing that now? On this show, we've been talking for months about the need to evacuate these thousands of Afghan translators and others who helped U.S. service members during the war. There were definitely a few people sensing some regret here. Guess I'll be the first to admit it. Definitely not the first. Regret voting for Biden. Feel bamboozled. It's okay. No more malarkey or mean tweets. Well, that's one form of showing some strong regret. I'm going to just say it. I regret voting for Biden. Definitely should have kept Trump in office. If I knew what I knew now, I would have voted differently. May God forgive our country for what we have done to these people. And may every single person in the Biden administration be dragged in front of Congress and held accountable for this. Every single one. Looks like the only person with real international crisis experience on the stage. My relief when Joe Biden was elected is now tempered by what is happening in Afghanistan, which is beyond terrible. And on a personal note, the fact that I still can't enter the US from the UK to visit my grandchildren just seems to be pure spite on his part. Let's just all take this moment to applaud the progress Biden has made. Remember where we were just 10 months ago. Students were drowning in debt, COVID was surging, we were providing weapons to countries committing human rights abuses, and kids were living in cages. Oh wait. Oh yeah, and gas is up $2 per gallon, with inflation conceded at 5%, and estimated as high as 20%. People are also upset about a minimum wage increase, more oil permits approved, no real coronavirus plan, millions on the verge of eviction, and no significant police reform. The one good thing he's done is the child tax credit, and it's temporary. I was seven years old. Did you leave the comma George Bush off? Uh, but yeah, it's the governor of South Dakota's fault. I mean, seriously, Tom, what do you expect her to do? No worries though guys, Joe Biden is on top of things. This morning the president and vice president met with their national security team and other senior officials to hear updates on the drawdown of our civilian personnel in Afghanistan. And some Twitter users noticed some very interesting things about this picture. Number one, someone very likely lost their job. The White House definitely doxed a few people. This definitely didn't age well. You won't have to worry about my tweets when I'm president. And yes, I saw the time thing, but photoshopped or not, even if it was real, this whole situation looks like shit. And you don't even need an old photo, stage photo, whatever this is, to make it look bad. And as always, the memes from this were sad, but hilarious. Violent, but mostly peaceful transfer of power. Biden, you'd need F-15s or nukes to take on the government. The Taliban. Trump sneaks back on Twitter by disguising self as Taliban spokesperson. The Taliban are either mocking or thanking Joe Biden. This heavily armed Taliban fighter is holding a large group of women and children against a UN poster promoting gender equality. This is where globalist virtue signaling and weak socialist engineering meet the sledgehammer of cruel reality. People were tweeting things like, where's Joe Biden, where's Jen Psaki, and then someone said, where's the Lincoln Project? The Lincoln Project lost interest in the Afghanistan war once it turned 18. I told you these were sad but funny. 